Hi, welcome to the Potter's Roundtable. This is Pottery Shorts, a series of short pottery topics done on the fly. Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable, a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. Hi, this is Pottery Shorts again. I'm Phil Bernberg, and today's topic is what is a PSD? PSD. And what is the significance? Well, PSD stands for Particle Size Distribution. And what that means is that's the range of all the different sizes of particles in something. Let's say maybe it's a handful of sand or anything like that, and how much of each size there is. So a, a PSD, or a particle size distribution, can be shown, the easiest way to think about it is, I think, is as a graph. So I can draw a graph that shows the amount and the size, and so the size is increasing as you go to the right, and the amount is increasing. So this is, what you can imagine is, if I had, let's say, a handful of pebbles, and I, and I decided I'm gonna, I'm, gonna measure, I'm gonna look at all the pebbles and count how many of each size I have, I could plot up the results in the form of a graph that looks something like this. So each one of those, the sizes along here, and again, this is increasing, this represents the, the sort of amount of each one, of each one of those particles. And it's actually, rather than using this as sort of a bar graph like this, I can also just represent it, sort of smooth it out, and represent it as a curve like that. And so that's the way we'll, when we, when we continue talking about this, that's the way we'll, we'll talk about them. So this particular, in this graph, for instance, what this shows is that most of the particles are in roughly, the, the greatest percentage are, in, are in, from this size to this size, and there are a few that are smaller, and there are some that are larger. So this is a nice way to sort of visualize how much of all the different sizes I have. Okay, so here's an example of two very different mixtures of particles. And again, this is amount. And this, so the amount is increasing and the size of the particles is increasing. So I can have one, one curve or one distribution for one material might look like this. And another one might look like this. And what this shows is that material A contains a lot more of the smaller particle sizes than material B. They both have a range of sizes, but most of the, most of material A is around this size, this sort of size in here, and most of B is in this size in here. So B is generally a lot coarser material or a coarser blend than, than, than A. Here's another example that shows the different width or the range of sizes. So again, this is the amount increasing. This is the size increasing. And so I have one, one, one range that looks like this, and I have another one that looks like this. So this is A, material A, and this is material B. And what this shows is that material A has a broad range of sizes, and material B has approximately, has a lot of the same size, but it's almost all one size. So it doesn't have nearly as many of the smaller particles and the larger size. It's mostly like one size, kind of like typical beach sand that you might find, whereas this is more like sand that you'd find in the ground with a lot wider range in sizes. So you can tell a lot by, by looking at these charts of these graphs. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel.
visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. The, the idea, I think the idea of particle size distribution is really not talked about very much in pottery, but in fact, it's really very important, especially for making clay bodies, because the different sizes of particles in a clay body affect all the properties of the clay body. They affect the workability, they affect the shrinkage, how much it shrinks when it's dried, how much it shrinks when it's fired, and how dense it's, it's possible for it to get when it is fired. We know, for example, that finer clay particles, like in the material like ball clay, are more plastic by themselves, they hold more water, and they generally, they generally result in more shrinkage of the clay. We also know that coarser particles, such as in fire clay, shrink less, they're less plastic, and they tend to stiffen the clay, or they provide what's called tooth, meaning a certain stiffness or resistance. The clay stands better by itself. We also know that we need a, a mixture of small and large particles to pack together and fill space in order for the clay to get dense. So as an example of that, if I have just one size particle that looks like that, and I pack them together so that they're actually touching, as they're packed together as closely as possible, I still have a lot of space in here that isn't filled. So if I have a, if I have a something, a bunch of these materials, there's a lot of space here that isn't filled. Where the well, the way to fill those spaces is to put more particles in there. So if I blow up one of these triangle sort of areas that looks like this, the way to fill, this is this, the way to fill that space would be to pack some more particles of a, of a smaller size in there. Now I still have spaces between these, so the way to fill that is to pack even smaller particles in here, and so forth, until you get down to tiny little spaces. So what this says is that if I really want to pack particles closely together and get it dense, I have to have a range of sizes. I can't do it with just one size, because I'll always have these spaces available. So what this means is that for a clay body, I need a compromise or a balance between plasticity and, high, and, there, and the accompanying, usually you get higher shrinkage with it, and stiffness with lower shrinkage. So what this means is generally, I want a broad particle size distribution for good clay properties. I want a distribution, if I could analyze all the particles in my clay, I want a distribution that looks more like this than one that looks like that. So if you're making your own clay body for a specific purpose, for example, let's say you want to make it for throwing rather than, than hand building. You're really trying to optimize it for a particular method of use. Or, or maybe, maybe you're doing it for a particular type of firing, like wood firing, where you're trying to, pre you're trying to perfect the, the body for uh, improved flashing. Or maybe, you're, let's say you're trying to use a local clay where you really don't know the properties of the clay, but you're trying to build a body around this local clay. The point, point here is, think about the particle size distribution of the mixture that you're making. You generally want to have a mixture of several different kinds of clays, because as we just, we just mentioned, for instance, some clays like ball clays are very fine, some clays like fire clays are coarser, so you generally don't want to make a clay body out of just one type of clay. You want, to, you want several different types to give you a balance of the particle size distributions. Plus, think about the fact that you're also going to have the fluxes and the silica in there, so that affects the total particle size distribution. But the point is, you want a broad particle size distribution and a good balance of, to get a good balance of properties. So I hope this has been useful and thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This way we get more viewers of our, of our videos. Also check out our website, www.hfclay.com. 
We'd really like to thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. And if you'd like to consider becoming a patron, go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on the Potter's Roundtable.